my Umbraco pals out there in the tinterwebs. My name is John and in this video I'm going to be going through a collection of essential tips and tweaks that I think you should be applying to your Umbraco V9 projects that will help you Umbraco like a boss. Now in this video we're going to go over how to manage local developer connection string settings, very useful if you're working in a team of people. We're also going to look at how you can create redirects now within .NET Core. So how do we do our HTTPS or WWW only policies? After that, we're going to be looking at how we can create Umbraco application extender builders and custom middlewares to make sure that our start file doesn't get too cluttered, nice and clean. We like that sort of stuff here. I'm also going to show you how you can write errors and information logs to the logger because that's changed slightly. And finally, we're going to wrap everything up by looking at how we can improve the performance within our view components. So remember in .NET Core, partials have gone and the Umbraco partial helper has gone as well. So how do we make sure that when we're using view components, they load lightning fast? So if all of that sort of stuff sounds good to you, carry on watching, it's gonna be a classic. If you haven't already, I recommend that you smash the subscribe button. This is episode six in my series of how to build websites using Umbraco V9. So if you want to learn more about Umbraco, web development, productivity, smash subscribe, be a legend, do it. So, assuming we've done that, let's take a look at how we can manage local developer connection string settings easily. To start the ball rolling, what we're gonna be doing is looking at how I've historically managed multiple developers and their connection strings in Umbraco V8 and below. So what we've got in front of us on the screen is an Umbraco V8 project. And as you can see, I've opened up the website CS Proj file. Now within all of my projects, I tend to add this little snippet here. So this target before build. Now what this is saying is that whenever you open a solution within the Visual Studios, Whenever you do a build, before the actual build process kicks off, it's going to run this MS build command first. Sneaky. And what we're saying here is that the output of this rule is going to be our connection strings.config. Now we also have a condition or a rule in here. And basically what it says is on build, if we look in this transform config folder and we can find a file which is connection string and then dot computer name and then config. What we're gonna do is apply a transform to it and we're gonna apply the transform to the connection string. Now, if we look within our project solution, you can see that I've also created this folder called transform config. And in here, we've got some connection strings which have been post fixed with the computer name. And then clicking on this, you can see that we've just got the simple XML um, transforms and we've got the Umbraco DB DNS and we've got the local developer settings. Now, using this technique is really nice. I'm not a big fan of using a team shared database. I think things are much more efficient when everyone has their local development environment to work. And I particularly like this technique because it means that the whole team's config is checked into source control. So no one can accidentally do a git reset hard or a git clean f and lose all their config. The other nice thing is it's super simple for anyone new on the team to get up and running. All they need to do is come along in this folder, create their own connection string, install the database, job done. Don't need to worry about overriding files and trying to do um, commits and squashes and all that sort of stuff. Now, obviously I really like this approach and I wanted to keep the same methodology within Umbraco V9. However, things are different. So, how do we do this within Umbraco V9? Well, in the V9, we have our program.cs file, and this is the entry point to our application. Now, the nice thing about this file is that we can start configuring things in code. So, gone are the days of having to do those post builds tasks and writing your own MS build deployment scripts. So, as you can see on the screen right in front of us, within our create host builder, I've added this little section here, which is called configure app configuration. And this is a helper which comes with .NET. Now, as you can see, it takes in this context and the builder as parameters. And on the first line here, I've got this builder.addjson file. 
and here we're just loading in our normal app settings. It takes two additional parameters. One is that is optional. So I want to say false. So this is a mandatory file that needs to exist. We also want to set true to the is automatic reloadable. So yes, we want it to automatically reload. Yes, there has to be an app settings. Now the clever line is the second line. And this is where we're saying builder.addjetsan and we're doing our app settings dot environment dot machine name dot json this time we're saying true it is an optional file and we're also going to reload everything when we see some changes and for shits and giggles i've also done this add environment variables this is kind of handy so i recommend you adding so basically what this is going to say is if it can find this app settings dot machine name dot json apply those changes on top of our app settings now as you can see on the left hand side here i've got a number of different application settings and they've all been post fixed with a machine name so if i look on my pc here and i do view your pc name you can see that my device name ends with 47 blah 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 and i've post fixed this file with my machine name and within this file, all I've got is my connection string. I've added in my Umbraco DB DNS again, and I put my local developer settings in here. So this way we can have the exactly the same approach in Umbraco V9. Don't need to worry about messing around with the CS podge file anymore. We simply just need to write a few snippets of code within program and off we are to the races. So this is fantastic. For my next trick, I'm going to talk about redirects and how do we actually do them now within V9. So for all you Umbraco old hands out there, the snippet in front of us is probably going to look very familiar. So in V8 and below, within ASP.NET Framework, we can only host our applications using the IIS. So to do redirects within older versions of Umbraco, it was very common to use the IIS redirect module. And then within our web.config, we'd start writing some rules like this. So we'd have some XML, we'd define our rules, we'd do some regexes, and this way we'll be doing things like our HTTPS only rule, or maybe our www only policy. Now obviously within ASP.NET Core, things are very different. Within ASP.NET Core, we can host our application in the Windows or maybe the Linux. And this means that our IIS specific rules are no longer going to cut the mustard anymore. So we need to do something different. And this is all achievable within our startup file. So hopefully you can see that within startup.cs. In here we have a configure method. And this configure method is basically how you can configure Umbraco to bootstrap differently when it launches. So in here, um, I think as I showed you in my last video, I added some custom redirect rules, some routing rules. So basically within this configure method, you're going to do any routing and redirect rules. So as its simplest, you can do this routing options. So as you can see, we have this new object I've created. It is called rewrite options. Out of the box, ASP.NET Core comes with two very handy extension methods one called add redirect to https permanence we also got the add redirect to www permanent so instead of having to mess around with all that xml and creating our own custom rules we can now use these handy extension methods and then to apply them to our application you just use the app.use rewriter and you pass in your option object now if you're at home trying to copy and paste this from my screen all this code is available from my start kit which is available below so don't stress about trying to copy stuff you can simply clone that repo and do some copy and pasting now one thing to note as well in here is that you've also got this env is development so it's very easy to do this statement here and only have our https and wwf rules applying within our production build config now one of the issues that i have of adding all this type of code within configure is that our file is going to get very bloated for a simple startup site where we've only got a few redirects we're probably good however in production when we've got likely hundreds of rules and lots of different routing requirements 
this file is going to become very unmanageable. And this is why I very much recommend that you look into creating your own custom Umbraco extension builders and middlewares. So as you can see down the bottom here, I've created this use customer routing rules. And I really like this extension method approach because it makes my code very declarative. So I think we can all agree we can basically come in here, read in sentence format what is going on. So in use custom routing rules, you can probably guess I'm doing some custom routing rules. So within my config folder, you can see that I've created a class which is called add routing rules. Now clicking on this, you can see that I've extended the Umbraco application builder extensions. So in order to do this, create a class, it needs to be static and partial. And then because it's a partial class and we create an extension, we need a single method. So this is going to return us our Umbraco endpoint builder context. Because it's an extension, we need to use this. And this is also going to take the Umbraco endpoint builder context. Bit of a mouthful. And then from here, we can add in our routing rules or our redirect rules. So what I'm going to do in this one is first I'm checking that Umbraco can boot. If I'm honest, you probably don't need to do this. However, sometimes it's better to be safe than sorry. We also then need to pass back our builder context. And from here, I'm adding in my routing rules. So using endpoint route builder and map controller routes, you can see that I'm registering my custom vanilla MVC controllers and my secure backend controller. So I'm hoping you can agree that this is much nicer than having to manage all of our code within a single configure file. Now we can further improve things by creating a custom middleware. So as you can see here, I've also got some custom redirects. So instead of adding all my rules here, it's also possible to add them in this way. So back within my config folder, I've got add redirect rule. Within here, I'm creating another static partial class that is of type Umbraco application builder extensions. This time I'm using the Umbraco application builder context. So this is slightly different than the interface we used in the other example. I'm also using this because it's an extension method. And then from here, using the app builder, I'm then adding in some custom routing rules. So I'm adding in one routing rule, which will enforce a no trailing slash policy. So if we add a trailing slash to our URL, we can have a redirect and it's going to be a 301. We're also going to do a silly rule here just so you can see it working. So if any of my URLs end with exception, it's going to redirect us to the home page. So we can see these rules in action. So if I press trailing slash, you can see that I've automatically been redirected and it's disappeared. And then if I do a slash exception, you're going to see that I've been automatically redirected to the home page. And I think this is a really nice way of managing the startup file. I highly recommend that when you start configuring things in anger using V9, that you follow a similar technique. We are down to our final two tips. So before we leave, I definitely want to talk about logging. When we're writing our custom code, super important to be able to write any information to the log files to help us dig, diagnose why things have gone wrong. And in V9, the logging process has changed very slightly. However, it's still pretty much exactly the same. So in V9, we're basically using the .NET Core logger. So you call it by using Microsoft extensions logging. So wherever you want to use a logger, within the constructor, pass in a iLogger. This is something that uses Genevix. So within here, you can see that I'm passing in this log publish notification, which is simply just the name of the class that I want to associate my log information. So this is just going to give us some extra information when the log file is being rendered. Now, from here, you have access to a log object. And from here, you can have access to things like log information, log debug, log to race, log the error, you get the gist. So logging stuff, super simple. Now, if you were not aware, the easiest way to look at this log file within Umbraco is via the back end. So go to the settings tab in the back end, click on the log viewer, and it is going to give you access to this beautiful dashboard. 
Now clicking on all logs is going to give you an access to all of your logs in sequential order. Clicking about is going to allow you to drill into the detail. So this can be really handy. You can also do search for logs. So you can just type in exception, do whatever, and it's very easy to find errors. Now, just so you're aware, in case you didn't, all the log file information there is basically just being read from the log files on disk. And you can find those files if you really want to within the Umbraco folder and within the logs folder. So as you can see here, we've got some custom, well custom, we've got some JSON files. And this is basically all of your error logs. So this can be handy to know. Now, my final farewell tip is all about view component performance. So I did a video very recently about content modeling. And in that video, I talked about how I structure my master layouts. And for me, I like to use, well, I, I used to like to use partials, but these have gone in .NET ASP core. So instead we use view components. Now in Umbraco V8 V7, we used to be able to use the cached partial helper. And this would basically cache all of our child components or our elements, whatever you want to call it. So it, our websites and our web pages will be more performant. Now we can do exactly the same thing in ASP net core using the cache tag helper. So in its simplest form, all we need to do is do a cache tag and anything that you wrap within a cache tag will be cached. So as you can see here, I've got a cache tag. I'm using the expires after property and I'm using the time span for minutes. So this is going to cache my header component for five minutes. You have a few options when it comes to tag. So you can add in unique identifiers and some other properties. However, for most instances, you'll probably just want to use expires after. And then within here, you can see that I'm just doing my normal view component loading script. And that is it. Basically, if you're using view components, I highly recommend that you think about using the cache tag helper because it's going to make your website lightning fast. And there she blows for this episode. So I'm hoping you found some useful tips that you're going to start implementing within your own Umbraco V9 projects. If you are, please let me know in your comments below what you thought. Also, this series is about content for you guys. So if you want me to cover something in detail, please leave a comment because I will probably do a video on it. So again, it's got to that stage of the videos where it's time to say adieu. But before I do that, I need to sell my stuffs. So if you haven't already, if you like this content and if you've been watching it for long enough, you get the gist of what I'm about. Smash the subscribe button just so you can get the weekly updates on my content so you can basically become a better developers. I also do a weekly Sunday newsletter, link below. So if you want to learn about Umbraco, developer productivity, subscribe to that. I'm also in the process of about to start embarking on my third book, a book about Umbraco V9. So nothing to do, but keep your eyes peeled for that. Be on Lean Pub sooner or later. Otherwise, if you want to do me the matter of solidists, then hit the like button and help me trick the YouTube algorithm and share my videos to more people. Otherwise, I hope you found some value from this video. Hope you're having the amazing days wherever you are in the world and happy coding.